breaking news tonight, the takedown on the train. A man has opened fire on a train traveling from Amsterdam to Paris. Three people have been reported wounded. A train flying through the French countryside at 200 miles per hour. A knife-wielding man armed with an AK-47 and 300 rounds of ammo on the loose inside. This video shot by a 22-year-old Army National Guardsman, Alex Scarlatos. Dude, I tried to shoot him. And the world's jaw dropped when three young Americans managed to thwart a terror attack. I just looked over at Spencer and said, let's go. That's Airman Spencer Stone. Stone seen here with the bare back suffering a knife wound as he subdued the attacker. Brought down before he could kill and mate. And then I was able to grab him again and uh, choke him unconscious while Alec was hitting him in the head. It was either do something or die. With their childhood buddy Anthony Sadler, they were touring Europe on vacation. Ordinary men suddenly called to greatness. Three friends now hailed as international heroes. They hogtied the alleged terrorist, beat him to submission. He's still awaiting trial. And the three young Americans, well, the French president gave them a medal. They met the American president. They were all over our TV sets. And yes, those are the same people, the real people, those actual young Americans playing themselves on screen in director Clint Eastwood's The 1517 to Paris. I went through the casting process and looked at the actors, but then the more I met with them, there was something about the, the camaraderie with the three guys and growing up together. I said, I wonder if these guys could do it. And yeah, they did. It. A lot of people think it's like traumatic for us, but it's been two years now getting to film and finally put in like an exclamation point on the story with him behind the camera. It's um, well, like priceless experience. Tent, hammock. Casting the real people is the kind of executive decision maybe only Clint Eastwood can make. Carry on. I'm sure there were people at the studio saying, this is a terrible idea. Oh, I'm sure they did. Clint Eastwood is a famously sparing director, not much direction. Not many takes. <laughs> to me, Spencer looks like he needs a lot of direction. <laughs> um, That's what my teacher said. <laughs> <laughs> they all grew up in Sacramento, California. Not exactly model students in school. And we're back in SAC. Uh, have you gone back to that school that, since this? No. Never. No, no, we never want to go back. We avoided it at all costs. <laughs> I mean, they must be kind of grudgingly quite proud of you now. I wonder how they feel. Uh, I, well, we have an interesting relationship in history with that school. Alex's mum is here for the hometown the screening of the movie. Did it make you kind of more scared about what he went through? Yeah, it does kind of make me catch my breath when you see it and the tragedy that could have happened that day. Anthony's parents also here. I thought they did very well. Uh, it's still, still unusual two and a half years later to see, see them on TV and then now on the big screen. The boys all attended church. Anthony's dad is the pastor. The devil that sent that confused terrorist didn't know that God already had a team on board. Hometown heroes, no doubt. Clint Eastwood fans. Are you guys old enough to know what a big deal it is to be in a Clint Eastwood film? <laughs> <laughs> this is based on a book they wrote, a book they got to Eastwood, but they didn't want to act. We thought, like, Oh, you want us to reenact it for the actors? They didn't take much persuasion. And that kind of blew our minds. But at the same time, we we're like, Clint Eastwood thinks we can do it. We might have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only other example we could think of is World War II hero Audie Murphy playing himself in To Helen Back in 1955. We're like, hey, Clint, we might need some acting classes. He's like, oh, I don't want you to do that because then it's going to look like you're acting. A lot of the extras, the paramedics, were also playing themselves. So was Mark, one of the other men who confronted the attacker and nearly died. It was just almost like living it twice, but not nearly as scary. We're on the same train, it's moving, you know, and the same amount of blood, and me and Mark both kind of got lost in it. I forgot everyone was there, and until I heard uh, Clint say, cut, or that was enough, and I kind of was like, oh. We would like to get across with the movie is that anybody can do something like this. Everybody's capable of doing something extraordinary. Yeah, I, it's just choices. I'd say the reaction had more to do with our friendship and the fact that we just didn't want to die that day. Alec and Spencer are now out of the service. They've all appeared on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and Alec got pretty far on Dancing with the Stars. We kind of always felt like our lives 
weren't supposed to be regular in a way. We didn't know what exactly that meant. Have you been at all concerned that by putting yourself in the public eye, you then become a target? Absolutely. Because you were attacked in a bar, right? Yeah. Uh, outside of a bar. Outside yeah. of a bar. So, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I was on the street corner. I can't believe you're trying to make it. You're standing next to a bar, you know. Trying to make it sound more respectful. Stone was actually stabbed after an argument outside a bar just months after the train incident. Was that at all connected with this? Not at all. They didn't know who I was. Uh, just ended up being running into some bad guys. His attacker pled guilty and is now behind bars, but the movie doesn't touch at all on their lives now. I almost wanted to see Alec on Dancing with the Stars and Spencer getting stabbed outside of a nightclub um, <laughs> as part of the that. film. Yeah, but, um, I wanted that in there too, but it wasn't relevant. I was kind of catapulting you towards something. Right now it's catapulting you towards some hangover food. Wanted to show they were just regular guys dealing with things who end up doing an extraordinary thing. Brace for impact. What? Common theme for Eastwood think Sully landed that plane on the Hudson, saving 155 lives. Or American Sniper, Chris Kyle's story. The word heroes I hate to use because it's so overused. If you become an Eagle Scout, you're a hero. But these three are real heroes who now want to become real actors. We all want to pursue it and take the lessons that we learned along the way from Mr. Eastwood. We all can't wait to try and attempt uh, to actually depict a character next. Clint claims that's easier. For professional actors, it's much harder to play yourself because you're used to hiding behind characters. There was definitely like insecurities that we kind of had to pretty much just get over. For now, this trio just relishing telling their story. Um, even getting plenty of attention, guys. <laughs> Not enough. Getting pampered by makeup artists and stylists, hanging with Clint. People think uh, we're a boy band in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun. I'm Nick Watt for Nightline in Los Angeles. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.